Hello, I'm Professor Alice Roberts. This is Lockdown Anatomy. We've looked at the bones and the muscles of the upper limb. We've looked at the blood vessels, the arteries and the veins, and now it's time to look at the nerves. Once again, I'm using complete anatomy to show you inside the human body. So to begin with, we're going to focus in on the neck region, which might seem surprising, but this is where the nerves come from that will innervate the upper limb. And we can see them there emerging between the individual vertebrae of the cervical spine. I've taken the clavicle away so that we can see their trajectory much more clearly. So spinal nerves emerge between vertebrae and immediately split into two branches, a posterior one which goes backwards to supply muscles and skin over your back, and an anterior one which comes forward to supply tissues in front of the spine. So we're looking at the anterior branches, or to be more precise, the anterior primary rami of these spinal nerves. And they form the roots of the brachial plexus, five roots, C5, C6, C7, C8. So they're all from cervical spinal nerves. And then T1, the anterior branch of the first thoracic. Now those roots are going to join together to form trunks. So C5 and C6 join together, C7 continues on its own, and C8 and T1 join up. And then we end up with an upper, a middle, and a lower trunk. And these are making their way across the posterior triangle in the neck behind your sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then the trunks are going to divide. So we have the three trunks, and each one of them divides into an anterior and a posterior division. So this is the part of the brachial plexus that lies underneath the clavicle, six divisions and those resolve themselves into three cords which run down into the armpit or anatomically the axilla. So let's have a look at how those six divisions join up to form the three cords then. The anterior divisions of the upper and the middle trunk join up to form a lateral cord and the anterior division of the lower trunk continues on as the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Now we're going to swing around the back and see what happens to those posterior divisions. And what we can see is that all three of those posterior divisions come together and they form the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Now we're going to spin back around the front again and start to look at the nerves which emerge from those various cords. And in this video we're just going to look at the five main nerves which emerge from those cords of the brachial plexus. First of all, we'll start by looking at the lateral cord. And the first nerve which branches off from that is called the musculocutaneous nerve. I always think this is a stupid name for a nerve because most nerves supply both muscles and skin. This one's not particularly special in that way. So there is the musculocutaneous nerve. It comes from the nerve root C5, 6, 7. And that's going to supply muscles in the anterior compartment of your arm muscles that we met in an earlier video. Here's the largest and most superficial of all those muscles, biceps brachii, so that is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. If we strip that away we can see the nerve and we can see that it pierces through that shorter muscle, coracobrachialis, and then continues down the arm where it supplies brachialis muscle as well. So those are the three muscles supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. You can remember it with BBC, biceps, brachialis and coracobrachialis. Now we're going to whiz back up to the axilla and to the cords of the brachial plexus and look at another branch of that lateral cord and that is the lateral root of the median nerve and perhaps not surprisingly there's also a medial root of the median nerve. So because the median nerve comes from both the lateral cord and the medial cord that means it has access to all of the roots of the brachial plexus and it has a bit of C5 and then C6, C7, C8 and T1 within it. This is where the median nerve lies in relation to the main artery of the arm, the brachial artery. Where it starts up there in the axilla, it lies lateral to the brachial artery and then it rolls over the front of the brachial artery to lie on the inner side of it, medial to it, by the time we get down to the elbow. The median nerve really is just passing through the arm. Its job happens a bit lower down in the forearm and the hand. So here we can see it again with a bit more anatomy around it. The median nerve lies on the medial side of the brachial artery, which itself is medial to the biceps tendon 
just in front of your elbow in that anticubital fossa. The median nerve is the main supply to the superficial forearm flexors. It supplies all of those muscles except flexor carpi ulnaris. And it supplies some of the deeper muscles as well. So if we strip away that superficial group, then we can see the median nerve and we can also pick up a branch of that median nerve which runs even more deeply right on the surface of the membrane which joins the radius and the ulna, the interosseous membrane. So this branch from the median nerve takes its name from that. It's called the anterior interosseous nerve. And that's running down between flexor digitorum profundus, it supplies the lateral two bellies of that, and flexor pollicis longus, which it also supplies. And then as we get down to the wrist, it supplies pronator quadratus as well. But the median nerve still has more work to do. It continues on into the hand and it passes into the hand underneath the fibrous flexor retinoculum that keeps all of those flexor tendons in place. And this is where the median nerve can become compressed in carpal tunnel syndrome, causing pain and tingling in the hand. Now I'll strip away that flexor retinoculum so we can see the median nerve, but also the muscles that it supplies. It supplies the lateral two lumbricals, which come off the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus. Remember the median nerve supplied the muscle bellies of that up in the forearm as well. It also supplies opponens pollicis, that little muscle of the thumb which brings the first metacarpal across the palm. And it supplies the overlying abductor pollicis brevis as well but usually not flexor pollicis brevis, as some of the textbooks still mistakenly claim. The median nerve also has sensory branches in the hand. These are common digital nerves running up between the metacarpals, and they split into the digital nerves running up adjacent sides of fingers. So the median nerve is supplying the palmar surface, the anterior surface of the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and then half of the ring finger. That's the median nerve done and dusted. Let's go back up to those cords and look at the medial cord again and another important nerve which comes from that, the ulnar nerve. So that contains C8 and T1 nerve roots. The ulnar nerve, very much like the median nerve, is passing through the arm, not doing much at all. It does give a few little branches, sensory branches, to the elbow joint. And then here at the elbow, it's lying behind the medial epicondyle, that knobbly bit on the inside of your elbow. And actually, with the fingers of your other hand, you can feel in behind that medial epicondyle and roll the ulnar nerve around. And if you've ever hit your elbow in that position, then you will have perceived the pain of hurting that ulnar nerve. It's what's often called the funny bone. It's not the funny bone at all. It is a nerve. The ulnar nerve then is going to continue down into the forearm. It's destined to supply other muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm. So it comes from behind the elbow into the anterior compartment by passing between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris. And it's going to supply that muscle and then the other half of flexor digitorum profundus, the medial two bellies that weren't supplied by the median nerve. Then it runs down between those two muscles all the way down to the wrist. And at the wrist, it is quite superficial. It goes over the top of the flexor retinoculum and into the hand. And then it supplies all of the remaining small intrinsic muscles of the hand, the hypothena muscles at the base of your little finger, the medial two lumbricals that weren't supplied by the median nerve. And then over on the other side, adductor pollicis that draws the thumb down and flexor pollicis brevis. It also supplies the interossi between the metacarpals. And like the median nerve, it has sensory branches as well, this time supplying the ulnar side of the ring finger and the little finger. Now back up to the top, we've done the medial and the lateral cords. Now we're going to have to look around the back and find the posterior cord and look at two branches that come from that. You can see one branch emerging from that posterior cord and then wrapping underneath the shoulder joint. That is the axillary nerve and it is at risk when the shoulder is dislocated. Below that you can see the radial nerve, big chunky nerve which supplies all of the extensor muscles of the arm and the forearm. Let's pick up on that axillary nerve then as it wraps underneath the shoulder joint and see what muscles it supplies. It supplies deltoid and then underneath deltoid it supplies teres minor, one of those rotator cuff muscles. 
and you can see the square shaped window through which the axillary nerve is passing. It's a window framed by the humerus on one side, the long head of triceps on the other, teres minor above and teres major below. It's called the quadrangular space. There's triceps. This is going to be supplied by the radial nerve, but I want to take away the lateral head of triceps so we can see that nerve and it's lying right up against the bone there, so that is at risk if you have a mid-shaft fracture of the humerus. It gets there by passing through this triangular space between teres major above, the long head of triceps medially, and the humerus laterally to lie in that spiral or radial groove around the back of the bone, the humerus. Now we see it at the elbow where it's forgotten it should be around the back in posterior compartments and it switches to anterior to the elbow doing the opposite of what the ulnar nerve does. At this point it's also giving lots of branches to the superficial forearm extensor muscles and it also splits into a main superficial branch and a deep branch which wraps around the back again. It pierces between the two heads of that very deep muscle supinator wrapping around the radius there and then that deep branch is going to supply all of the deeper extensors and it's called the posterior interosseous nerve mirroring that branch of the median nerve on the other side. The superficial radial nerve continues its journey all the way down to the wrist. This is a sensory nerve. As we get down towards the wrist it passes under the tendon of brachioradialis and then it breaks up into four or five dorsal digital nerves which supply sensation over the radial side of the back of the hand and up into the fingers. Thank you for watching. We've now innovated the entire upper limb all the way down to the fingertips. Now there's enough information there, I think, for medical students, but if you wanted to push it a little bit further, I'll do another video going into the innovation, in particular all those branches of the brachial plexus in a bit more detail. But for now, I think we can say we have covered the anatomy of the upper limb. We've done the bones, the muscles, the joints, the arteries, the veins, the nerves, and we can move on next time to looking at the lower limb. Thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me your time. If you enjoyed these videos and you think there are other people who might enjoy them too, please share them and please comment as well. Thank you.